This video tutorial will help solve free response question number six from the 2012 AP Chemistry exam. Let's read through the question. In a laboratory experiment, lead and unknown metal Q were immersed in solutions containing aqueous ions of that same unknown metal Q and X. The following reactions summarize the observations. They're shown. And then the first question asks, on the basis of the reactions indicated, arrange the three metals in order from least reactive to most reactive. Whenever I see questions of this sort, I always remember the very first reaction you learned about in electrochemistry or redox. When a solid zinc bar is immersed into a blue solution of copper 2 chloride or copper 2 nitrate, and the copper plates out, onto the solid bar, so the copper is coming out of the aqueous phase into the solid phase, and zinc is going into solution. That's shown here, the products of that reaction, zinc ion in solution and copper solid plating out. The lesson I always remember is that the more reactive go ion goes into solution. So in that reaction, zinc is more reactive than copper. So we can look at observation one for example, shown up here. Observation one, lead, in a, lead solid in a solution of the X2 plus ion, lead goes into solution. So lead is more reactive than X. In the second one, Q also in a solution of the X, there's no reaction. So the reactive ion is already in solution. There's no reaction occurs. So in this case, X is more reactive than Q. And then finally, uh, very similar to observation one, uh, lead in a solution of Q plus, lead goes into solution shown there, so lead is greater than Q. So now we can put all three of those in order now from least uh, reactive to most reactive. So the least reactive one is Q, the middle one is X, and the most reactive is lead. Part B of this question shows an electrochemical cell that has a lead electrode in a solution of lead nitrate and the X electrode in a solution of X nitrate. Salt bridge is present. Uh, the electrodes are connected with a voltmeter. You get 0.47 volts and electrons flow from the lead electrode. So electrons flow from the electrode toward from the lead electrode toward the X electrode. So the question asks, write the equation for the half reaction that occurs at the anode. So you need to know what is occurring at the anode. Is it oxidation or reduction? The way I always remember this is anode oxidation. Those are two vowels, A and O, anode oxidation, cathode reduction, two consonants. So what's happening at the anode? Well, the electrons are flowing from uh, lead to the X electrode. So um, oxidation is loss. Remember oil from oil rig. So lead is losing the electrons here and therefore lead is the anode. So the oxidation half reaction looks like this. Lead to PB2 plus and two electrons. Part C of the question, uh, asks you to determine the standard reduction potential for the cathode half reaction. The cathode is the unknown X, and then try to identify the metal X. We were given at the beginning or onset of the question the uh, standard potential for the cell, which was 0.47 volts. And remember to calculate the overall potential for any uh, voltaic cell or um, uh, potential cell is uh, this formula right here. The uh, the standard cell potential is equal to the um, potential for the cathode minus the potential for the anode. Well, we can rewrite that as, uh, the, as the, the equation shown on the bottom. The standard cell potential is the reduction half cell plus the oxidation half cell. The reason we reverse signs is because remember the uh, standard, the, what's occurring at the anode is oxidation and on the uh, uh, standard reduction potentials tables given to you on the AP exam, everything is shown as a reduction. And therefore, if something's being oxidized, for example, lead in our half cell, we reverse the sign for this reaction and therefore we must reverse the sign for the, uh, the potential for that, for that half reaction. So we now know some things that we can substitute into this equation right here. We know the overall cell potential, which was 0 0.47 volts, is equal to the cell potential for reduction. That's X. That's our unknown. 
uh, plus the cell potential for lead. And we just looked at that. Uh, the number is positive 0 0.13 volts, so plus 0 0.13 volts. So by uh, simple subtraction, we know the reduction half cell potential is 0 0.34 volts, and that's positive. So then what is the identity of the metal? Well, your best course of action here is to go back to your standard reduction potential table given to you in the exam. This is not the whole table. I've annotated it somewhat. But we just look for some reaction that has a cell potential of 0 0.34 volts. And there it is. So our metal must be copper. And so that's the answer for the second part. Uh, X is equal to copper. Part D of this question asks you to describe what happens to the mass of each electrode as the cell operates. I've written the answer there. Uh, lead mass decreases over time. The copper electrode mass increases over time. Let's think about why. Let's go back to the diagram. Remember that uh, le lead electrode on the left is what is being oxidized. And as that occurs, it gives up electrons, which goes through the circuit in that direction, and goes into solution as lead 2 plus. So in other words, lead is essentially dissolving and going into solution, whereas X, which we now know is copper 2 plus, copper accepts those electrons and plates into the solid phase. So the mass of the copper electrode increases over time. The last part of this question imagines three different scenarios um, and uh, asks what happens to the cell voltage under these scenarios. The first one says a student bumps into the cell setup, oopsies, and uh, the salt bridge loses contact with the solution. Is the voltage equal to 0.47 or less, or what happens? Well, the voltage is uh, down to zero. No current can flow without a salt bridge. Remember, mobile ions are necessarily to equilibrate any charge imbalance that occurs as the uh, oxidized species at the anode loses electrons. That cell becomes more positive, so neg uh, positive, uh, negative uh, ions are needed to flow toward that through the salt bridge. And similarly, on the uh, reduction side, becomes more negative as electrons flow into the electrode being reduced, uh, to the species being reduced at the uh, um, at that electrode. So um, ions are needed to equilibrate the charge imbalance. So if there's no salt bridge, no charge flows. You have a voltage of zero. The second part says, a student spills a small amount of sodium sulfate into the compartment with the lead electrode. So we need to go back to our diagram and look at uh, the lead electrode right here. The side with the lead electrode also includes uh, lead 2 plus in solution. And uh, lead 2 plus combined with sulfate, you'll have a reaction that looks like this. Lead 2 plus in solution plus the sulfate ion from the sodium sulfate that the student, student spilled is going to precipitate a solid. It's going to produce lead sulfate solid. And so in essence, uh, you are removing lead from solution. And if you remove lead in solution on the, uh, the anode side, um, you're, you will uh, drive the uh, lead to oxidize more and create more electrons. Uh, essentially, as you decrease lead uh, concentration, the anode reaction becomes more favored thermodynamically. And uh, you will generate more electrons uh, from the oxidation of lead to flow through uh, the current. So we can say then if the lead sulfate, sorry, if the sodium sulfate is spilled into the side containing the lead electrode, that the voltage increases and voltage will be greater than 0 0.47 volts. Now the third question, oops, let me scroll back. The third question asks, after the laboratory session is over, student leaves the switch closed, so current runs the whole time, and the next day, the student reads the voltmeter. Is it less than, equal to, or greater than 0 0.47? Well, just like any battery, batteries run down over time. And again, let's look at this and figure out why. It's because uh, of two things. Primarily, it's because uh, X2+, plus, which we know is copper 2+, plus, uh, gets reduced over time and plates onto the X electrode. And so the concentration of that, electro, of that electrolyte, that species that's being reduced in that electrolyte solution on the, um, 
on the cathode side decreases over time. If the concentration decreases over time, the voltage also decreases over time. So the answer to uh, part three is that the voltage will be less than 0 0.47 uh, if it runs overnight. Another way to say the same thing is that the, for any battery, the voltage approaches zero over time as the reaction approaches equilibrium. And equilibrium would be um, a voltage of zero going across the, uh, the voltmeter.